Hey, what's up? How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. Man, I got a bunch of schlucks and a bunch of morons that follow Insane Throttle Biker News. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I got a bunch of morons. You know, I put a picture of Justice for Cannon up on a lot of our platforms. And the response has been great. But... Of course, there's a lot of bunch of pecker pullers out there that think they want to put their two cents in. I really, really didn't think I had a bunch of liberal snowflakes that follow me. I really didn't because usually a program like this is just too hard for them to handle. Too hard for them to handle. But it seems like they still figure they want to follow me and put their two cents in. So, I'm going to go over to our Facebook page, and I really, you know, think you should, too, to check this out. Uh, just some of the replies I want to give you here. First pecker puller, Justin Throp. Yes, you're a pecker puller. If a cop killed this kid and was acquitted by a grand jury, you'd have been yelling about how the kid should have been uh, complying. You're all a bunch of you know, effing hypocrites using a tragedy to justify your shitty arguments. And then you, you know, hit on his picture. Yeah, this is a liberal snowflake, 100 freaking percent, man. See, God forbid, God forbid, attention is drawn to a black guy killing a white. And a white baby at this, five years old. God forbid. They're all, they even got a group supporting the, the guy who did this. You believe that? I say go medieval. That's just me. I don't know, though, these leftist bikers. Now I'm starting to really understand what is wrong with this lifestyle. We've been infiltrated. We've been caught off guard. We got a bunch of pansies that are trying to call themselves bikers. <laughs> Uh, let's go to another one here. Let's go to another one. I got to look here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Aaron Tyler, you're another pecker puller. Don't expect that to matter to them because then they'd have to let go of their BS, phony, politicized outrage and using this boy as an excuse to keep hating other people. You, you click on this guy. This guy don't get laid. I'm telling you, you click on this, that's why he's out there running his mouth. Then they're saying, well, the murderer was apprehended the next day and will stand trial while the murderers of Brianna Taylor still roam free. Really? <laughs> you call this justice? Because he was arrested. No, that's not justice. The kid lost his life. That's not justice. No. But yeah, these are the type of people that I found follow us. I love Brian Buchanan, man. Wow, you're a special kind of waste of oxygen. You got to love him. He's actually the admin over at uh, our sponsor group, Bikers and uh, Brotherhood, him and Judge over there. So you guys got to go take a look at that. Uh, good stuff he does, man. Brian never uh, sugarcoats anything anything and it's a great group they really do good uh over there but you guys got to take a look at this man you're gonna see the reason why you have so much trouble in the scene now yep i finally realized it that after uh what's it called uh that after i did the video yesterday saying you know what you're not entitled to do this you're not entitled to do that and boy did they come out of the woodwork i knew they would they came out of the woodwork real freaking strong and then you even had one guy claiming well you know you don't you you delete my comments okay let's get through this real quick over on youtube and facebook since we have so many numbers people like to spam the hell out of us this is the reasons why I make sure I got to approve the comments because I don't want people oh a date in this or see the sexy that really you want that on my comment no that ain't gonna happen no 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 so I don't censor your comments 
It takes time because I do have another life. I do. You know, I know you guys think that all I do is, you know, you know, talk on and give the biker news and all that crap, but that's just not the case. You know, I have fishing to do. I have writing to do. And by the way, to check out my ride over on Instagram, get on over there. Uh, but then he comes back. Another thing. Well, you change your opinions all the time. What are you talking about? I talk about what's going on at that very moment within the show. It depends on what's happening, the way I look at something. See, I'm not one of them that just keep an opinion that's hardcore, that's the way it is, and blanket everything. No, I don't do that. I look at something in context, then give my opinion. But today, we have news from around the world. We're going to go around the world, baby. Around the world. And some very interesting stuff. And I even got midget wrestling from Sturges. Yes, we're going to talk about midget wrestling. Come on, you got to have some fun. And, of course, we got Corey uh, Graff's Wall of Shame. <laughs> yeah, oh, Corey, he's uh, keeping up on them, guys. As well as news from Canada, Australia. You know what? You guys acting a fool. I always say this. You acting a fool. But one thing that I did sit down and think about. How lucky we are in the United States. Our rights are right there. It says it in the Bill of Rights. And then you look at some other countries and what they're going through. And it's like, damn, man. I really couldn't get adjusted to that type of living. It's like it's all controlled. And that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. You know, I heard uh, Australia is a beautiful country. But when it comes to bikers, they don't like them over there. They do not like them. And then you sit and you wonder why, you know. They overreact to a few that represent clubs. It's just like their gun control thing. You know, with all that Outback stuff out there, with all them crocodiles and snakes. You know, I'm not a snake person. And you go out into that wild and stuff and things want to eat you and stuff. Why'd you give your gun away? Why'd you do that? Yeah, there was a massacre, but everybody gives their guns up? Are you... You're kidding me, right? And you're in a place where you need them. You need to shoot the things that want to eat you. Of course, of course, you do not want to shoot the cute kangaroos. Those are pretty cool. You know, I really want to see one of them, except out of a zoo. I heard, you know, they come up there and box you. <laughs> They'd be a good sparring partner. But, uh, yeah, you know, I was just thinking, uh, you know, how good we really do have it here. Uh, even though that it's it's becoming more, you know, restricting on what you're allowed to do and not do, uh, especially during this COVID-19 crap, uh, I really believe you're starting to see what it could be like in the United States if... Uh, you know, those Marxist commie bastards uh, take control. And people are, you know, they get upset when I bring a little politics in. You know, I'm a well-rounded type of individual. You should always be learning what's happening. Just don't, you know, biker news, that's what you're about to do. Okay, I'll do that and not talk about everything else. It's a news program. I'm giving my opinions, jerkies. Uh, but anyway... I seen it on Facebook. I was like, they're there. Holy crap. You're really saying this? He got his freaking justice? That's not justice. Justice is going medieval on him. And boy, boy, oh boy, am I hoping when he gets in that joint. I say, you know what? Give him a few years of uh, remans and then just take him out. That's just my point of view, man. I believe then, only then, will there be justice. And, you know, I heard a little bit about more of the story was the father actually had the guy eating dinner the night before. You explain this to me. You explain this to me. And also, can you go over to Facebook and jump on this post that says, uh, Justice for Colin. 
And look at all the comments, and then you'll start seeing all the freaking weirdos, man. All the pecker pullers. So go over there, check it out, and then comment. Because they crazy over there, man. And I never thought that I'd have pecker pullers, well, that, not that many, following me. Because, again, this show ain't for them. So, let's get into the biker news and news going around uh, the world. And then I'll come back with uh, the final thoughts for today's show. To cover north of the border. It gets freaking cold up there. Did I ever tell you that? Hey, during our winter times, you guys can keep your Arctic freaking blast to yourselves, man. Because it, it's cold. Anyway. Devil's Hand Poker Run in Campbell River to face RCMP scrutiny. They can't even have a poker run without the cops bugging them. See, that's how bad it is up there and in Australia. Hey, at least in the United States, we can have a poker run. Well, you know, there are a lot of cops that show up, but they're not like these cops, man. Holy cow, these cops, man. They make you pull down your pants to your ankles, bend over, and they freaking make sure you got nothing up there. That's how bad them cops are. Ours, they bug the hell out of you, yes, but not like that, man. They don't give you an enema to have a poker run. The Campbell River RCMP will be keeping a close eye on the Devil's Hand Poker Run happening in Campbell River. And this one it was of uh, today's airing. Uh, the first annual Devil's uh, Hand Poker Run is scheduled to begin at noon in Campbell River at the clubhouse of the Devil's Army Motorcycle Club on Peterson Road. Well, that's an interesting club name interesting by the way man do you guys ever watch that series lucifer man i i can't wait for the next season man that's a good thing it, i love that show uh it's pretty funny if you ask me and boy does he get laid anyway the bcr uh, cmps man that's a mouthful combined special uh forces uh what you got a freaking special forces cop unit up there has identified the Devil's Army as an outlaw biker club known to be a support club for the Hanny Hells Angels chapter. In the interest of police and public safety, they always, always use that in the interest of police and public safety. My question is, what's the interest to you cops? Shouldn't it say in the interest of public safety? But no, you, you slipped that right in there. But you didn't think people would read that would uh, see that one, did you? Uh, the Campbell River RCMP, uh, they're the ones that wear that red outfit, right? With that big old hat. <laughs> Is advising the public there will be an increased police presence in the area during this time. Sergeant Dave Johnson, how you doing, buddy? You're uh, worldwide now said in a press release that officers will be focusing on monitoring and enforcement of both provincial legislation as it pertains to driving offenses under the Motor Vehicle Act and legislation contained in the Criminal Code as it pertains to impaired driving. Yeah, they're out there to harass them. That's what they're out there to do. Why don't you guys just say, hey, we're going up there to give them metamos, you know, at least be honest about it. A poster for the event on Facebook says all makes and models of bikes and hot rods are welcome. No cops or law enforcement are, of any kind are allowed to the run. <laughs> I love it. Get it. See ya. Audi. Bye bye. Not welcome. Don't have an invitation. Go screw yourself. That's basically what it says. Uh, the route for the run will be revealed the day of the run. I love it because they don't want the cops knowing what's up there and have them chasing their freaking tails. Uh, meanwhile, police also remind participants to follow COVID-19 pandemic safety guidelines. Yeah, you know, here in the United States with them guidelines, man, anybody coming back from Sturges, they are ordering you to self-isolate. 14 days and again I don't know how the hell they're going to freaking enforce that but hey you know let them think they're in charge 
Quote, while event coordinators have not provided an estimate of attendees, the Campbell River RCMP would like to take this opportunity to remind participants that adherence to provincial legislation and recommendations in regards to the current COVID-19 pandemic is strongly suggested as in cases in British Columbia continue to rise. Following current safety guidelines is necessary not only to maintain the safety of the attendees, but to minimize the spread of this disease within our community. Did you hear it come out that uh, one uh, schluck uh, said that, well, I think we're going to be wearing masks for the next three years. Oh, God. You, you know what? They you, you give them an inch, they take it two freaking miles, these people. That's why you can't give up your uh, safety and security for, you know, dictatorships, man. Yes, I believe in wearing masks because I ain't going to catch this shit. And yes, I believe in stay the hell away from me. But you can't dictate people's lives. If somebody's a schmuck, they're gonna they're a schmuck. They're gonna do it. Just my two cents on there, man. Uh, there was a breaking story today out of uh, mcall.com out of Allentown. Uh, shots fired as rival gang members attend a motorcycle cruise by Lori Mason Schroeder. And yes, it's them saying it. So stop saying it's me. You know, I get that crap over on HarleyLiberty.com all the time. It's motorcycle clubs, not motorcycle gangs. Don't you think I know that? You don't need to remind me. I am just presenting the damn story, you schluck. Allentown police are investigating after three people were shot overnight during a motorcycle cruise involving rival gang members. Uh, officers were first called to the 600 block of North 7th Street around 11.30 p.m. Friday for a large gathering of people and motorcycles blocking traffic. Assistant Chief Charles Roca said the group dis uh, dispersed, but uh, police were called back to the same area around 3.30 a.m. Somebody was uh, late. Uh for reports of shots fired, witnesses told police that the gathering was part of a motorcycle cruise that began outside the city and was attended by people affiliated with rival gangs, which led to violence. Three men showed up at area hospitals with uh, non-life in uh, threatening injuries. Uh, they have not said who the clubs are right now. We will be keeping a lookout for this one. Now let's go over to Australia, the land of the kangaroo, baby. A uh, senior common chero member admits drug charges money laundering ahead of a trial. Not good. Uh, a senior me member of uh, the common chero's had pleaded guilty. Uh, Jerome Fana admitted the charges against him at the high court at Auckland on Friday via video link from prison. You know, how is the prison system over there in Australia? You know, I kind of watch... Uh, what is that on Netflix? Uh, the world's uh, top toughest prison, uh, or some crap like that. And you, you go over to Germany, and it's like, damn man, you guys get like Starbucks and stuff. You guys get to do this. You got kitchens to cook in. It's like a freaking uh, luxury freaking getaway with them over in Germany, man. It's like, damn, man, I wish they had even that here in the United States. You know, in the United States, they don't mess around. They don't. Uh, the gang's treasurer admittedly participated in an organized criminal group for the purpose of drug dealing, money laundering, and possession of 5.9 grams of methamphetamine. Justice! Sally Fitzgerald convicted him and remanded him in custody for sentencing on October 23rd. The treasurer told the judge he didn't want convictions entered as he wanted to keep his place in prison ahead of sentencing. However, Justice Fitzgerald declined. He was arrested uh, along with eight other co-accused following a series of raids across Auckland last April, which saw more than $3.7 million in assets seized. Damn, I'd be pissed. Along with luxury cars, motorcycles, luxury luggage, and jewelry. See, the bikies do it a lot different over there than they do over here in the United States, man. They just straight up, they them guys are gangsters over there, man. Uh, that's a lot of money. They know what they're doing over there. 
The police investigation into the supply of controlled drugs from the New Zealand chapter of the Common Chero Motorcycle Club. Uh, his lawyer said the client was aware of the criminal activity that generated the funds. Hopefully he keeps his mouth shut and not become a rat. But claims he didn't know who generated the money and the source of it. Okay, that's cool. Uh, the rest, including the president, are set to go on uh, trial in November. And then they give uh, kind of like a fax of uh, who to... It, it's actually good for people that I don't know. Uh, it was formed by William George Jock Ross, a Scottish immigrant in Sydney in uh, 68. He changed his name after seeing the John Wayne film, uh, The Common Charos. In 82, uh, a second uh, chapter was formed by... Anthony Mark Snotty Spencer when visiting the United States. Uh, Spencer met members of the Texan Motorcycle Club, the Banditos. Uh, the Banditos eventually patched over to Second Com Comanchero Chapter. That's when the Milpera uh, massacre happened in 84. Left seven people dead, including four Comancheros, two Banditos, and a 14-year-old bystander. Uh, if you guys don't know about that one, uh, go ahead and Google it. It's something else. Now, let's go over to Europe! Yes, Europe we're going to go talk about now. Uh, sleazy Riders. <laughs> How cute. Drugs, torture, and turf war. Europe's biker gangs turn nasty. Some 99% of bikers are law-abiding, say the one percenters. Do you guys ever get freaking tired of that? You know, do you? It's like, okay, you got to use that in every damn news article you talk about uh, bikers. It's like everybody knows about it, where it supposedly came. You don't have to keep on telling everybody. Yes, I know it's like freaking, uh, you know, you entertain uh, the civilian population and they're stupid. So you got to tell them, but it does get boring. In June, Dutch police cracked open a shipping container on a farm and found it had been converted into a torture chamber. Ouch, they getting gangster over there now. You guys acting the fool over in Europe too. With walls covered in sound installation and a dentist chair equipped with arm and leg restraints as well as handcuffs, hacksaws, and pliers. Fuck on. Yeah, they got jigsaw going on over there. They were tipped off by an informant inside Kala Waga. Uh, wow. Uh, hmm. A Dutch motorcycle gang uh, whose leader, Kilo, has been arrested and charged with uh, running a murder-for-hire scheme. Guess he had to make his money. Prosecutors say a Moroccan Dutch drug kingpin hired them to carry out 11 hits, five of which were executed. Kilo denies any involvement when police asked him why hundreds of texts on his mobile phone referred to hit jobs. Are you kidding me? Really? So yeah, the moral of the story on this one is don't accept contracts on your phone. Anyway, here's my favorite one. Yes, my favorite one of today. Midget wrestlers stand tall while competing at Sturge's Motorcycle Rally. <laughs> <laughs> there, you guys gotta come over from the radio. Check this out, man. Little midget over there with his. <laughs> anyway, it, uh, you know what? I'm not trying to, you know, piss off the ones that have fetishes. You know, you freaks that have fetishes with midgets and stuff. Hey, you know, each his own. Uh, Tony Elliott has never had a problem with the word midget. He enjoys being the world's smallest extreme athlete. The three foot six inch wrestler who's been in movies and TV shows like Jackass 3D, <laughs> Jackass, Half Pint Brawlers, I gotta look these up, Psycho Midget Wrestling and Fancy Pan said the word midget is just that, a word, and doesn't understand why people take offense to it when it doesn't. Well, you know, here's a cool guy. I'm proud and happy of who I am, he said Wednesday evening at the Knuckle Saloon where he and other competitors are performing at the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. Nobody is making me do this. I do this because I love it, and it's just like why does it make you unhappy doing what you want to do? 
Micromania Midget Wrestling. Hey, you got a shout out, man. Made its debut following its name change from Midget Mania. On Monday at the rally, Elliot was joined by Chris Blanning, a.k.a. Little Fabio, Hank Dalton, a.k.a. Handsome Hank, and two others on the floor. Elliot said he's been wrestling for about 20 years. He started as uh, a sidekick training and learning how to take falls and bumps. When he met a crew at another wrestling show, he was invited to work with them, gave it a shot, and never looked back. There you go, man. We have midget wrestling out at Sturgis. Hey, has anybody got any video who's been there of the Cabbage Patch uh, wrestling or the mud wrestling? Man, that was another one of my favorite events. But, yeah, midget wrestling happening over at Sturgis. Now, let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. Former Greensboro police officer charged with <laughs> one of the three, domestic assault. Here it is again. It's here. The newest, easiest, must-have uh, app what? for everything in the triad. Oh, I don't need this. Right? Breaking news. The yeah, just an advertising, not a video. Uh, Zachary McQueen was arrested by Guilford County Sheriff's Office and charged with assault on a female. By Carrie Hagen. A former Greensboro police officer is charged with domestic assault. On Friday, the Greensboro Police Department was made aware of criminal charges against Zachary McQueen, who is now in the wall of shame. Wall of shame. Uh, who has since been terminated from his position. McQueen was arrested by Guilford uh, County's uh, Sheriff's Officers and charged with assault on a female. He was previously charged on August 13th with driving while impaired and citing uh, for failure to reduce speed uh, that caused an accident. Cannon's family We're going to take a look at this one. entire community devastated, still trying to wrap their minds around this loss, how someone could shoot a five-year-old boy in the head. We shouldn't even be here. They showed up in droves to the Shingleton Funeral Home in Wilson. Just a kid trying to have fun, trying to have fun in his own yard, and something like this happens. It's despicable. Merrill Race, Cannon Hinnett's great grandfather, putting into words what so we're many listening in now. Thinking. This guy took something away from us that should have never happened. The words to explain. That's a uh, spokesman with Guardians of the Children. Animals, everybody. Lee Parker, Cannon's stepfather. He tells me the five-year-old loved his bike and his two sisters. His mother, too heartbroken to speak on camera. I could sit here for days. I just... Now I got it, guys. The amount of money that's going to bring him back. The shooting happened around 5.30 Sunday evening on Archer's Road. His family says Cannon was riding his bike in the front yard when their neighbor, 25-year-old Darius Sessions, approached, shooting him in the head. Sessions then took off. He was arrested Monday in Goldsboro. Cannon's father says Sessoms lived next door to them for years, that they'd shared a beer the night before. The family telling me there was no history of fights or animosity, none of it adding up. While the grief is overwhelming, the family says the support they've received from the community here in Wilson and beyond has helped. It's amazing. It's amazing. And the things that, that people have done for us all around, from Australia, Ohio, Colorado, I mean, it don't stop. It's all around the world. A community vigil that had been planned for later this evening. Has and been that's postponed. on uh, Dylan. You know, I just seen that story on the right hand side. So, you know, I didn't get it, you know, centered and all that stuff. So hopefully you guys listen uh, through it. Sad state of affairs. I'll talk more about that in the final thoughts. Uh, now, Greensboro police officer, uh, there's another one here. Another one. Let's listen. police officer is fired and facing charges. Zachary That's McCoy the one we just covered. Here's the, the video. Today, Officers found out about criminal charges against him for allegedly assaulting a woman. McQueen was charged yesterday for driving while impaired and failure to reduce speed to avoid an accident. McQueen joined the police department back in 2016. Okay, yeah, that was basically the video portion of uh, what happened with that uh, schluck with, for the wall of shame. So let's go into my final thoughts. Yes, let's get midi. Carrie here from Beggar Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to baggersyndicatecycles.com and check it out.
Yeah, don't forget to go over there at Bagger Syndicate Cycle. They provide a lot of hats that I wear on the show, as you can see the one I'm wearing now. Poor Chonky! Yep, I'm wearing that one. They made that one. They got a lot of other designs that uh, come out as well. Uh, the video uh, that just played about the five-year-old, I didn't expect that one. I just seen it uh, while we were doing the Wall of Shame. And it's good to see the Guardian, the children out there, the bikers. And it took five days, five days for some of the mainstream media to pick this up. That should tell you a lot about how they are trying to dictate people's thoughts. And it should be very scary. Very scary. I knew it was when I started going down my Facebook and looking at the comments on that post. I was like, you are really kidding me, right? This is the way some of you freaking morons think? No wonder everybody looks at you as pecker pullers and you can't get laid. You know, they always got this certain look, man. And, and, and these freaking morons, you know, high school morons. You know, we used to shove them in the lockers or swirlies, man. I used to love doing swirlies. You stick them in the toilet, flush that sucker. It's them type that come out kumbaya on everybody. That one comment, oh, you know, you're only using this, uh, you know, the further advanced people hating other people. You know what? Let's be honest. And I was pretty honest in that one podcast that uh, was only published on uh, MotorcycleMadhouse.com, Spotify, and all that to uh, iTunes. So if you want to listen to it, it's over there. It talks about race relations. This world, we're never all going to get along. That's just the facts of life. Do you think that over the thousands upon thousands of years... We're just going to kumbaya because it's modern times. Because it's 2020. It ain't 1990s or any of that anymore. So we all should just get along. Well, that's just not going to happen. It's not realistic. Actually, it's a joke. It's a fantasy. And for those that propagate that BS, you're schlucks. Because guess what? Not only are you deceiving yourself but you're raising your kids to be weak and in life you can't be weak that's why we're seeing all these kids having trouble out there that's why you see a lot of suicides out there because they can't handle what life is thrown at them because the way you taught them this it takes a village crap that don't work Hey, maybe it worked with the Native Americans back in the day, but that just ain't the case anymore. That is just not our culture. And the faster you recognize that, maybe things might go back somewhat to normal. It's funny. I talked to uh, a couple blacks, and they were like, man, don't even, you know, put me in that uh, category with that organization it's run by a bunch of white liberals they don't care about us I actually seen a video and I think I talked about it on one of the other platforms where it was on the south side of Chicago we're talking war zone we're talking zombie land they came out the neighborhood to this protest and they kicked them off the street said you know what why are you even here where are you when our kids get killed. Where are you with the violence? I loved it. You know, I actually should get a clip of that and uh, show it on the air. And it'd be like, you know what? It's about time. But I think this is kind of a turning point right now. And things might get worse over this kid. Because there's a lot of people upset about this one. And then you got these morons out there uh, just stoking the fires with their BS ideology. What I'd like is to have one of you schlucks, one of you pecker pullers who posted on uh, Insane Throttle's Facebook page under this post to reach out to me and I want to bring you on the show. 
I want to be able to bring you on the show and let's talk about our disagreements, as you would say. I want to know how your mind works, what you are thinking when you say some stupid crap like that. I want to know if it makes you feel better because you uh, experienced trauma in your past or something, or you just think that, you know, life isn't the way it should be, you're not getting laid, something. I want to get to your issue. Contact Dr. Hollywood. Let's have a session. Let's talk about it. Let's get your feelings out there. This is an open platform, so I encourage it. Info at InsaneThrottleBikerNews.com Very easy to remember, so you can contact me. We'll have a good show. I'll give you an hour show to try to convince me your opinion's right on this situation. Hell, let's talk about race relations. Give me your viewpoint, I'll give you mine. Then, the audience can decide. Very easy stuff. Info at InsaneThrottleBikerNews.com if you got a ball sack to come on the show. Now, going up to the Canada story, man. Ain't it like these cops want to give you an enema? Uh, you know, it's bad enough. You know, I can't say that. You know, down in the United States, you know, when the clubs have parties and stuff, you have them out there with their little notebooks. Well, now phones. But back then it was notebooks, writing down your license plates, you know, putting you in the database and stuff. It's kind of funny, man, when uh, I see uh, or hear people... Uh, bitching about the gang task force list that it's like damn that's been around forever uh i maybe not by you guys but it's always been around here in chicago it's like damn man we're used to that <laughs> uh but it's just interesting to see how different uh how can i say law enforcement agencies around the world treat bikers and you would think that we here in the united states you know could smarten up just a little bit and see just how far that cops will take take their bs uh, you know i can't i can't swear that much on this one uh you know what i need to do is get on a platform you know other than uh, our main uh, uh itunes and you know what i'm gonna be doing it on the radio there you go, because we got the radio station coming up, and, you know, I'll do an uncensored type of show, man, where we just really get down and rock. But it's interesting uh, that, you know, bikers need to start learning here in the States, especially after that Mongo case where they rico to an entire damn club. How they did that, I'll surely not know, you know what I mean? I'll never know how they did that, and hopefully get it uh, turned on appeal, but, you know... Canada and Australia, they're really close in the way they handle stuff. You know, they have to be cooperating with each other, uh, what they're doing. Uh, again, I still think that, Oz, you're pretty stupid giving up your guns when you did, when you got freaking snakes a mile long and gators, that went, or crocodiles, as you call them, uh, trying to chew on your leg or something. You know, what do you do? Do you get to shoot them or, you know, how's it work? Or do you have to, you know, call somebody to say, hey, man, I got a crocodile on my leg. I can't do nothing about it. Or you uh, have to, you know, grab your Bowie knife or something. And, you know, that's just interesting to me. Uh, Sturges rally. Boy, did that one freaking uh, rile everybody up. And now with Laconia, they're just putting so many restrictions on Laconia. Why even freaking go? It ain't even a bike rally that you know. Of course, I'm one of them guys that are against freaking, uh, you know, the big rallies anyway, except when it comes to midget wrestling. That's some funny shit. You know, get over there, get some 420, and get high and all that good stuff and watch some midget wrestlers and some, uh, you know, nice uh, looking ladies mud wrestle and stuff. <laughs> but uh the wall of shame I, you know what it's always the three crimes with them guys and it's funny you know somebody came out and says well you know you defended leo over the black people well, where are you getting this stuff man stop smoking stuff better than i got 
Would you dummies listen to what I say? Okay? Listen to what I'm saying from a logical standpoint, and you know what you're, you know, then you come back with your BS, you know you're stupid. Uh, anyway, uh, like I said, we are working on the radio station, and yes, I'm going to have a haul ball friggin' type of uh, program on that one, man. It's no holds barred on that. We're not going to be censoring none of that stuff because, boy, with the money I'm paying, they can't do nothing about it. Uh, again, we got some interested in doing shows. I did talk to Black Dragon. He's going to want to put one of his shows on the radio. Uh, that way he can get, uh, you know, some exposure. If you have a show that you're doing, a podcast or something, give me a call, man. Uh, we'll work something out, get you on there. I ain't going to charge you any damn thing. It's your show. Do what you want. Your time slot's yours, and, you know, go for it, man. The listeners will make uh, the decision right there. With that, though, you guys take care. Have a good weekend. I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. See ya. Adios. Ciao. So long. Get your hat. So you want to know how to support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at baggersyndicatecycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!